والله يدعو الى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء الى صراط مستقيم Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Inspirations, Building the Foundations. All praise is due to Allah. We praise Him and we seek His aid and we ask for His forgiveness. And we send peace and blessings upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Today's topic is a precious statement. It is the reason for which this universe was created with all the galaxies, all the planets, all the stars, the moon, all the seas and the oceans, all the creatures that we find here in this universe were created for this statement, for this great issue. This great statement has the potential to change history because his, history is already there because of it. It is the secret of all life. It is the source of all power. It is the most precious thing we could ever think of or talk about. Today's topic is about the statement of Tawheed. La ilaha illallah. No one has the right to be worshipped except Allah. We will delve into the importance of this world so that we get to know why we, do, we have failed to understand its real essence and the great potential that it presents to us so that we lead a life of achievement, a life of self-realization, a life of great, or make, the making of the great history. Let me first welcome our guests. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Nice to have all of you here. Okay, before we delve into the issue of <coughs> la ilaha illallah, uh, last week we talked about a challenge. A challenge. And we said we're going to take every week one challenge, inshallah, so that we start building our Muslim character. We start practical steps. Simple, practical, but very beneficial steps. Inshallah to improve ourselves and get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> so tell me, what did you do with your challenge? Walid, do you have something? Um, Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I saw to, uh, here in Egypt while driving in the streets, yeah, and it's not organized well enough. So some people do some stuff that's out of system. So that gets you angry quickly. So I tried, to, I tried this week to ease the tension. And when someone does something wrong, like, all right, stop it, leave it. Uh, I find al-maqdira Excellent. Sometimes. So you try to control yourself while driving on the way, yeah. facing all that kind of frustration yeah. and bad behavior or, or all these kind of uh, ill behaviors and unacceptable practices. To be patient with that, that's yeah. excellent because many people lose their temper when it comes to that. So that's a very good mm. thing. So you managed to do that, really? I'm doing my best. MashaAllah, excellent. And can you think of... Any one of you? Okay, yes. Dr. Ashraf. You told us uh, last episode that uh, the, the way of uh, building foundation is the knowledge. Yes. So I started to read about fiqh al-ibadat. Uh, which is related to my work as a physician. Mm -hmm. uh, like uh, prayers and uh, fiqh al-salah, prayers and uh, ablution, al-wudu, and uh, purification, al-tahara, which is related to patients. Mashallah. Because every patient, uh, if he asked me any question uh, related to this topic, as a Muslim doctor, I should uh, answer it so uh, immediately. So you take that step forward to learn about yes. the acts of worship that we, aff or that we offer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ismail, yes. what did you do during this week? I have, alhamdulillah, um, increased some aspects of, of ibadah, but I will keep it to myself. Excellent, mashallah. mashallah. And I will keep mine for myself as well. No, I tried no, hard no. with something that I always suffered from, and Allah made it easy for me. Mm. Inshallah, today as we delve into the meaning of la ilaha illallah, or actually the importance of it, we will see how it can help us improve ourselves. Mm -hmm. The first thing I would like to talk about is that, you know, there is a need, a very instinctive need in man to recognize his creator, mm -hmm. to worship. This is a need that everyone has, this human nature. Many people try to run away from it, try to overlook it, but they can't. Mm -hmm. 
Man is created for worship. Man is created for worship. If you don't worship Allah, you're going to worship something else. There's no one who does, doesn't worship anything. Even the agnostic and the atheist, they worship something or someone. They worship. So man is bound to worship. But the difference is, who do you worship or what do you worship? <clears throat> now we know that, you know, human beings have this tendency or this need. For example, a son has the need to recognize his father. This is why in the West they have this problem with illegal children. They grow up with a very psychological, a big psychological problem that hampers their psychological progress throughout their lives. You know what it is? They don't know their, their father. They don't know their father. It's, it's the need of every human being to recognize their father. When they grow up without recognizing or knowing their father, it harms them. Psychologically, it's very destructive. This is only with human-human relationship. Likewise, every man needs to recognize his Lord, the one that he worships. Everyone has to recognize this. And these are evident because we know from history that the Greek, the Romans, they had gods. Why do you think they, they found about the need to have gods? They worshipped idols. They worshipped imaginary objects. Why do you think they had this? Because they recognized, they felt the need to have a Lord to worship. So it is deep in the human soul to recognize a Lord to worship, to submit to. You remember when we talked about submission? Yes. We are all created with this aspect, submissiveness. Being, sub, be, being submissive to someone who has power over us. Someone who has control over us. But unfortunately, many people fail to get to the only one who deserves to be worshipped. You know, even today, yeah, many people say, well, we have broken from these idols, the God of love and the God of the wind, the God of the mountains, the Greek and the Roman idols, but they have fallen into another thing. Because when they look at the universe, they see this massive and great universe, the great harmony there, the great system, all the wonders in this history, they, they cannot come about by chance. Mm. So running away from the idea of Allah or God, they created this concept, so-called Mother Nature. So. Because they recognized the intelligence behind all this great creation. And as I said, everyone, everyone worships someone or something. Some people worship their wives. Some people worship their girlfriend or a woman worships her boyfriend or her husband. Some people worship, worship sex. Some people worship, you know, wealth and money, business. You know what is the thing that you worship? It's the thing that you believe you should live your life for. Look at the people who are obsessed with wealth, with business. This is all what they think about. When they go to bed, when they wake up, the only thing they think about is wealth, how to increase their wealth. So that's their God. Some people, like for example stars, TV stars, they always think about fame. So they dedicate their lives to get that kind of fame. That's their God. That's their Lord. They worship it. Because they submit to the conditions that this aspect entails on them. So we have to understand this concept, which is man is created for worship. If we don't worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will worship something else. This is very important to understand. And the reason that we are talking about this today is that the word La ilaha illallah has great importance in our lives. You know why? Because all the weakness that we are living in, it can be sorted out with La ilaha illallah. This word is so powerful that it can change history. In the blink of an eye, Consider what happened to the Arabs. You know, the Arabs were the lowest nation on earth, killing one another, raping their women, eating carcasses and dead bodies, and they had no sense of honor or dignity. They were the lowest. They were subjugated by the Roman Empire, by the Persian Empire, by the Abyssinian Empire. They were subjugated. They were weak. They had no legacy, no culture in the full sense of the word culture. They were just a bunch of 
tribesmen who fought each other, who had no legacy, no contribution to humanity. The Prophet ﷺ came to them with the message for which humanity was created. This world was created, this universe was put together because of this word, La ilaha illallah. I know that many people live with this word but they don't understand its real meaning. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَإِنَّ مِنْهَا لَمَا يَحْبِطُ مَنْ خَشْيَةِ اللَّهِ Talking about stones. Some of the stones break down and crack because out of fear of Allah. Even stones understand the meaning of it. But unfortunately because we are taken by our desires, most of the time we fail to understand this word. We fail to understand the potential that presents to us the great aspects that it offers us. So from now on, inshallah, we'll try to open our eyes to the, see this wonderful aspect. Because I know, alhamdulillah, this is something that really makes the heart happy. That the Muslims today are aware of the situation. And many of them are so ambitious and they want to do something. And inshallah, they will do. But we'll try to open the way for everyone. So we recognize the real way to the real revival of Islam. Many people talk about manners. They talk about uh, being creative. They talk about being successful in work and profession. These are important aspects, but they forget the foundation. They forget the most important element in any revival, which is La ilaha illallah. Inshallah, next time we'll talk about its meaning, because its meaning is so profound and so important in our lives that it governs every move we take, every decision we make. All of this is controlled by this beautiful word, word La ilaha illallah. It's very important, you know, for someone to be successful is to have the correct perception of things. In business, you have to understand the market in order to be successful, to open a successful business. If you don't, then you will fail. Likewise, this life, what, what is Islam all about? Islam is only about understanding what this life is all about. Understanding the reality of yourself. Understanding the reality of this life. Understanding the purpose for which everything was put together. So, I want to ask you this question. What do you think? What do you think the meaning of La ilaha illallah should urge us to do as Muslims, as Muslim youth? What should it, should it, I know everyone can take one aspect of it. So tell me, what is the first thing that comes to your mind as I say, La ilaha illallah is the foundation for any revival? Walid? I think we can, what, we should, what we shall do is, if, if we can take it as an example, we take an example. You live as an employee in a company. You will try to do your best mm -hmm. to please your supervisor, yes. your director, yes. and uh, the, the owner or the share, shareholders. Yes. So what you need to do that وَمَا خَلَقْتَ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ So we are asked or required to, to prof, يعني, do our ibadah. Yes. We do it for Allah, we, we become super, superficial in it. Yes. And everything we do, is, we do it for Allah, we eat. If we say Bismillah, then it turns to ibadah yes. and it's for Allah. Yes. If when you come to work, you, get, you earn money to, to get married or to raise up children on kalimat al tawheed and so okay. on. So every little thing, any tiny thing you shall do, you shall do it to Allah. Yes, excellent. That's it. Excellent. So it means everything you do, you do it for Allah. Can anyone think of something else about la ilaha illallah? Maybe you can take one aspect of it and expand on it. Dr. Ahmed, come please. Um, I actually have a reflection to what you were saying before. Okay. You know, we, we have to come to realization that you know, you, your yourself is a is a body and a soul. Yes. You know, and each part has to be fed yes. one way or another. You have to feed your body and you have to feed your soul. If you don't feed your body, you will die. And if you don't feed your soul, your soul will die. Excellent. So as Muslim youth, you have to know this. You have to recognize this fact. And you also have to recognize that the more your heart is attached to something, the more you'll be enslaved to that thing, even though you may appear that you're controlling it. You know, the scholar of Islam, Taymiyyah, says... You know, the intellectual sees the realities of things. He does not look at the cover of it. So, you know, money, for example, you know, as you were mentioning before, you know, we're supposed to be controlling our pocket money. Yes. But yet, you find people might sacrifice their religion for the sake of money. Now, while in appearance, you know, he takes out the money and puts it back, yes. but in reality, his heart is enslaved to it. 
So la ilaha illallah is is a is the only method that you can free your soul from okay. that, and it's the only pure and uh, um, natural uh, food for your soul. If you Excellent. can if you can put it that way. Excellent. That, that's so. that's right. That's right. Actually, la ilaha illallah has the potential to make us break from all the chains of the body, mm. all the intellectual chains that we impose on ourselves or our societies impose on us. Because, just as I just mentioned, the example of the Arabs, they were so decadent, so ba backward, and in about 20, 30 years, they ruled over the world. Not only that, they presented to the world real justice, a great system of life. They introduced to the world, what? Scientific advancement, civilization, unprecedented in human history. And still until now, I recall, you know, in the UK, when I watched that three-series documentary called Imp Islam Empire of Faith. Actually, Western scientists, they themselves recognize and they admit that all the advancement that we enjoy today, we owe that to the Muslim civilization, mm -hmm. to the Muslim scholars. How did they do that? It all comes and emanates from La ilaha illallah because it has the potential to break all the chains, as I said. It opens for us new horizons of achievement. It puts us in a state of harmony with this world. Remember when we talked about this world all goes in harmony? And until we achieve this word, we will not live in harmony. Oh. Once we achieve it, life will be different. And everything will be on your side because you are going with the tide, the natural tide. The harmony that Allah created in this universe. You know, I remember one hadith which is great hadith. We, we, we read this hadith many times, but we don't reflect on its meaning. Many people, unfortunately, as I said, they don't understand what la ilaha illallah means. We say it every day. Mm. We say it in the prayer. <coughs> Sometimes when, when I'm shocked, I say la ilaha illallah. But do we really reflect on the meaning of la ilaha illallah? The Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith that we all know that iman is made of 70 and something branches. Mm. The highest of them is la ilaha illallah. It's the highest of the branches of Al-Iman. Mm. The lowest of them is to remove something harmful from the way. And bashfulness, shyness, is one branch of Al-Iman. Now let me take the lowest <coughs> level of Iman. Okay, the lowest branch of Iman. Remove something harmful from the way. Imagine that the Muslims, about 1.5 billion people in this world, mm. every day, each Muslim takes away something harmful from the way. Could you imagine how the Muslim countries could look like? Nice. Clean and tidy. Amazing. It's just, that's the lowest. So what do you think of the highest? La ilaha illallah. Wallah, if we achieve this, wealth will not govern us. Our desires will not govern us. We will be free. If you really want to experience real happiness, real freedom, it's not in possessions, it's not in wealth, it's not in fame. No, it is in gratitude and recognizing who our Creator is, recognizing our job and the purpose for which we are created. And really, La ilaha illallah creates perfect individuals. An example, Bilal, the companion, he was a slave. He had no place in this world. No insignificant person. He could have lived and died as if he had never been here. But when he came to know La ilaha illallah, the purpose of his creation, no one has the right to be worshipped. No one has, to be, has the right to be recognized in that way. No one has the right to be lived for except Allah. As I said, I don't want to get into the meaning of La ilaha illallah. We'll deal with this next time, inshallah. I'm just trying to highlight the importance of it. So when Bilal recognized this, and when they tortured him severely, the word that he uttered, Ahadun <coughs> Ahad. He's only one. La ilaha illallah. Why did he bring all this steadfastness, all this patience? What did he bring it from? La ilaha illallah. Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal as well. You know, when he was uh, challenged according to the that false statements, a statement about that the Qur'an is created. And he said, no, I'll stand up for the truth. I will not give up, I will not compromise the truth. Then he was taken to prison and he always said 
that I can be patient with anything except for being whipped. He said, I can't be patient with that. So he was worried about that. He was taken to the prison. Mm -hmm. And on the way to the prison, someone was going out of the prison, a mm -hmm. criminal, mm -hmm. who always went to the prison because he robbed people, because, he, because of fraud and different sins. Now when he saw Imam Ahmad and he saw the fear in Imam Ahmad, he said to him, oh Imam, you know, I've been whipped maybe a hundred thousand times because of robbing, because of stealing and theft. You are being, you will be whipped because you say la ilaha, because you stand for the truth. So Imam Ahmad said, when I heard that from him, I said I'll be patient. And he was whipped severely. And the man who was whipping him, he said, Wallahi, if I was whipping an, an elephant, it would have died. But Imam Ahmad was so patient. And the man started complaining about the aching of his body because of the severity according to which he whipped Imam Ahmad. But Imam Ahmad was patient. Then he said, he, he felt some pity to Imam Ahmad. And he said to him, shall I bring you some water? Imam Ahmad looked at him and he said, I'm fasting. I'm fasting. So could you see what kind of individuals La ilaha Allah would create? So this is why we need to understand this. Wallahi, if we understand it and live by it, it will change your lives. This world could be different. And I know many Muslims, they feel sad about the situation of humanity today, about the people that are being killed, who are being tortured, who are being denied the basic rights all around the world. Every Muslim feels pain for that. How can we change it? We can only change it if we understand this word. Inshallah, after the break, we'll elaborate more on the importance of this word so that we try to get to understand its real meaning. So we'll go to a short break. Stay tuned. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We're still talking about La ilaha illallah, this great statement. So this statement really has the potential, as I said, to set everything right in our lives. And the, our intention here is to, to try really to understand its meaning. Because I know we fall in the habit of just getting used to this word without understanding its true meaning. We should try our best to understand it. Because everything we do, every good aspect in our lives emanates from La ilaha illallah. And la ilaha illallah means that you live your life for Allah. And when you live your life for Allah, you cannot lie. When you live your life for Allah, you cannot cheat. When you live your life for Allah, you cannot misbehave. You have to be good. Because you know who you are. And you know, when you know who you are and what you are doing here, imagine the peace and tranquility that you, that you feel and that you live in. Because many people are lost. Look at the people in the West. People in the West, yes, they have the advancement, technological advancement and civilization, which is not denied. Many aspects of it are good. But what about the understanding of this world? They try, but they, are, they can't really get to that. Why? Because they're running away from the idea of worshipping Allah. They're trying their best to destroy their own lives. This is why everything they, they advocate you feel like it's turned upside down. Women rights. Look at the women at their stage. The highest rates of husbands beating their wives is in the Western world. What about women are, are used as sexual objects? They're not respected for being human beings. And all these stars who were in the 60s and the 70s, as they grew old, no one pays attention to them. They mean nothing now. They lost all that. So where is human rights? Where is women rights? Is women rights that to use a woman with all commercials, with car tires, with uh, 
uh, insect killers. Hmm. You get a naked woman sitting on a chocolate bar saying that this is women's rights. This is not. You know why? Because they fail to understand the foundation of this life. So there are no rules, no principles. You know, to get more into the aspect of La ilaha illallah, maybe it's good to show some examples of people who live their lives for this great word. La ilaha illallah, they act upon that. So we will go to watch this short documentary. And inshallah, we'll come back after that. So let's watch it together. In a small country in the continent of South America called Guyana, the Muslim population is growing. Fuad Muhammad was born in the year 1980 as an identical twin to his beloved brother, Farid. At the early age of 18, Fuad Muhammad experienced a life-changing situation. His older twin was involved in a fatal accident which led to a new realization of what life really meant. The day in which my brother died was the day I realized that this life is very short and that death comes to anyone at any time and sometimes it comes at times that we don't realize that death would come and losing a close one and a loved one and that needing and not wanting to meet him back and of course as Muslims we know that the only meeting place that we could have again is in Akhirah. Therefore I'm trying because of this to work very hard inshallah so that our family as a whole could be again together in Akhirah, in Jannah inshallah. After being a teacher in an Islamic school in Guyana, Fuad Muhammad wanted to further his studies in Islam and the Arabic language. Today, Fuad Muhammad is living in Cairo with his family studying and working in Islamic media. Three years ago, he was blessed with identical twins which came to him as a big surprise. Actually, we never really expected twins. Uh, when my wife was pregnant, the doctor told her that it would be one and every result showed just one, you know. And when uh, she went to delivery, Abdul Moiz came first, and then Abdul Mu'min. And it was a very big surprise for us also, because there were seven months babies. <laughs> they came two months before time, and then also they came, two came. Subhanallah. But uh, I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because they're growing up to be very good boys, inshallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He takes something from you, He replaces it with better, you know. And uh, He replaces everything that He takes from you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most just, you know. So on the day when they were born, I realized that Allah has taken one from me, that's my brother, and replaced it with two sons. Fuad Muhammad has plans to go back to Guyana and help the youths and the country as a whole in achieving a moral and ethical society. My plans... And I hope Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts it. It's to take back home to the people what I've uh, learned in Egypt in terms of uh, my uh, Arabic and Islamic studies. In order to build a society, first of all, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with. And a society in which the people could realize the real goal of their life. And this of course will make a better and more progressive society. In both uh, spiritually, morally, and, and, and economically, insha'Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's a really wonderful film, mashallah, very inspiring. And uh, allow me to welcome Fuad who will join us. 
السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته حمد لله بليز سو هاو ار يو الحمد لله لونج جيرني فروم غيانا تو ايجيبت اكشلي تو ديز اوكي ما شاء الله باي بلين اوكي ما شاء الله سو دو يو ثينك يو ار ستيل اون ذا واي ذا يو ليفت غيانا فور الحمد لله يس ايف اتشيفد ماتش اوف وات ايف كيم فور اند ان شاء الله اي كونتينيو توردز ذات ان شاء الله ما شاء الله not only for me but for my family also ما شاء الله do you think the moment when your brother died that was the moment that really woke you up to realize the reality of this life yeah actually yes uh, because any for any person you know when you lost or you lose something you know yes and then that gap remains there you know what's yeah. going to fill that gap and uh, and then i realize that the only befitting thing to really uh, replace my brother and give me a soul in my heart a comfort in my heart was turn to islam and turn to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mashallah must have been very difficult you know twins identical twins yeah they actually they have a special kind of relationship yeah but alhamdulillah uh, I, yeah. I, I, uh, before before anyone died i mean you keep thinking of these things you know what if i lose someone that you or what if i lose someone that is close to me how would i react actually i thought it would have been worse but uh, alhamdulillah islam as i said replaced that gap for me alhamdulillah okay so let's talk on the long run what are your goals after you finish your studies what are you going to do my goals uh, to do da'wah i just want to be part of uh, making the muslim society much bigger Mashallah. worldwide so actually so. you were working in guyana there as yeah. a teacher yeah and there. you left your job yeah and you came here to study yeah. further your studies yeah mashallah so you think you're progressing in that Yeah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. And I actually want to stay a bit, just a bit longer mm-hmm. so that, that uh, my wife and my kids also could benefit from Egypt. MashaAllah, mm-hmm. MashaAllah. So what are your plans after you go to Guyana? Do you have any clear plans what you're going to do? Actually, I, uh, not clear, but uh, in my long-term ter- long goal, I want to be, I want to be part of, of the school I was because it was a new school. And also, I just want to, I mean, go around and do da'wah, nothing else. I mean, just because... The people are in lost in the entire of South America. And actually was telling that the next language I have to learn is Spanish, inshallah, because I don't want to be based in Guyana. Because alhamdulillah, the Muslim society is, much, is very strong in Guyana. But the next, my next goal, inshallah, is to learn Spanish, inshallah. What's, so the, mu- what's the Muslim population there in Guyana? It, uh, it is about 20% of the population. Mashallah. And it's uh, growing every day. Mashallah, mashallah. So you, you feel they need more education, Islamic education? Oh, yes, because of... Uh, the the amount of people entering islam there's a gap the, because uh, when they enter islam what, what ne- what's next yes. i mean me, i mean there there must be personnel that would help them to reach and to understand i mean even la ilaha illallah yeah do you think you muslims they really understand uh, what or do they get the chance to understand what la ilaha illallah really means or they just get a shallow kind of meaning they get for me it's uh, it's a bit shallow but because of the amount of students uh, studying worldwide now from guyana mashallah Inshallah, in the future, we hope to make it much clearer, inshallah. Inshallah. Okay, let me turn to our guests. If you have any questions to Fuad, it seems to be a very interesting story, mashallah. Actually, we have uh, the new guest as well, Ahmed Al-Azhari, today. Mm. Uh, he has another story, mashallah, very good about education. So can you tell us a bit about this? Ahmed, why did you choose to study the, the subject you're studying now? Um, first, when I, went ent- when I entered college, I was studying uh, business administration. Yes. And... Uh, You know, I, I chose an elective in the humanities category, and it was cultural anthropology. And it happens that the, my professor in college was a revert, yes. um, Dr. Abdullah Kohl. Mm-hmm. And uh, he, you know, he paid attention um, to the Muslim community and how can the Muslim com- community understand itself in order to, to make a change, in order to make a revival through the knowledge of or the field of anthropology. Yes. You know, anthropology, it stresses on understanding the people from their own point of view. And what happens sometimes that people judge one another or, you know, don't, don't put yourself in the other's shoes in order to understand why he does this action, what perhaps he does not know, he did not learn. Yes. No one has told him something before. So it made me change the direction from business administration to anthropology. Perhaps I can make a difference in that field. You know, we have... But alhamdulillah, we have many people in business administration. We need more Muslims in social sciences, sociology, economics, political science, and so on. Excellent. So we can make a, we can make a difference. Mm-hmm. I just want to say something to Brother Fuad. Yes. You know, as you were saying before, I think, la ilaha illallah, you know, when, when that incident happened to him, it sort of explained what happens, and yeah. it gave him a solution. Yes. So subhanallah, la ilaha illallah, you know, explains the world to you. 
And when something, when a problem happens, it explains that problem and offers you a solution for yes. it. Mm -hmm. And the second thing, you know, he's he's making a sacrifice right now. You know, instead of having a stable job or something, he wants to go around make dawah and coming here to Egypt and you know, going through all these you know, changing of the environment and so on. Yes. So la ilaha illallah makes that makes that sacrifice worthy. You, mm -hmm. you find people sacrificing themselves, you know, for capitalism, communism, whatever that Ex thing yeah. they're living for. Yes. But, uh, you know, you would ask them, is, is, is your sacrifice worthwhile? Is it worthy in the end? If, yes. And even if it's worthy in the, this life, is it worthy in the year after? That's Which will all will enter. That's excellent. Actually, uh, I know you're saying that La ilaha Allah explains that ha what happened. But actually, it's not, it not only explains, it, uh, it provides the... Uh, the foundations to face any calamity, mm. any problem. Because the Prophet ﷺ taught us that when a calamity hits, we say, Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. From Allah we come, and to Allah we're going to return back. Or oh, mm. we belong to Allah, to Allah we will return. Mm. So it explains everything that happens. And it can make you strong in the face of every calamity. Mm. I mean, let's consider the state of the people of the West. As I said, every human being is, uh, is bound to worship. If you don't worship Allah, you're going to worship your desire. Some people, as I said, worship their desires. Some people worship the wealth or the fame. Some people worship TV. <laughs> some people are addicted to it because they believe this is going to bring them happiness. This has the, some kind of power over them that can really direct their life in one direction or another. They really do this. And once they lose this object of worship, like for example, someone worships his girlfriend, she dies or she abandons him, do you know what they do? They commit suicide. Man has to worship. If they don't find anything to worship, they'll commit suicide. And you know, the World Health Organization tells us that over the 40, last 45 years, you know, suicide rates have increased by 60%. And over the last three years, statistics indicate that every, every 40 seconds, there is someone in the Western world, which is the developed world, who chooses, chooses to end his or her, her life. Every 40 seconds, someone commits suicide. Where is sophistication? Where is education? Where is uh, all that kind of advancement? Because it's baseless. It doesn't fit into place. It doesn't go in harmony with this universe. This is what La ilaha illallah does. And to understand more the importance of La ilaha illallah, you consider all the previous generations, like all the prophets, from the time of Adam, Noah, Ibrahim, Suleiman and Moses, Jesus, David, Muhammad sallallahu all these prophets throughout the ages were sent for one reason, to call the people to worship their creator, to recognize their creator, to worship it. Imagine, imagine when you achieve la ilaha illallah, it means that in your heart you worship Allah, the actions of your heart. So you only fear Allah, so you don't fear anybody else. Like the people who pray all the prayers when they go back, to home at night. They pray all the five daily prayers. Why? Because they don't get to pray them at work because their boss doesn't allow them. <clears throat> these guys, okay, or these people, have not achieved la ilaha illallah. They've given something precedence over Allah. So, la ilaha illallah frees you from that fear, from that subjugation, makes you strong, makes you brave, makes you active. So if we really want success and revival, La ilaha Allah is going to make or be the foundation for every one of us. Some of the greatest aspects as well of uh, La ilaha illallah is that the Prophet ﷺ told us in a beautiful hadith. He said, if La ilaha illallah is put on one side of the scale and the heavens and the earth are put on the other, it will outweigh, the, uh, outweigh them. La ilaha illallah, the heaven, imagine this universe, the, the vast universe, this is what la ilaha illallah is. So imagine what it can do to you if you grasp the meaning of la ilaha illallah. I live only for Allah. With the actions of the heart, fear, love, hope, reliance, and dependence, all this is related to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so you are not subjugated to any one of the creation. This is la ilaha illallah. With the actions of the tongue, what you say, because you worship Allah, you say what is good. Because the Prophet ﷺ told us to do or to say what is good. So you always say what is good. Your tongue is clean, is pure. You don't use bad language. And then the actions of the heart. 
You live your life for Allah. So everything you do falls in that, kind, in that system of harmony. Why? Because you live for Allah. The actions you worship, you worship Allah. You know that no one is going to benefit you except Allah because He's the creator of the heavens and the earth and He's the one who controls everything. So I don't pray or I don't supplicate to peers or righteous people or angels or prophets because these people are creation. It's simple. There is the creator and there is the creation. The creator has power, the creation is powerless. They're helpless. So how could you turn to them in worship? Worship means love. Means dedication. Means that kind of psychological engagement with the one who has power over you. All the things that we enjoy in our lives, everything we enjoy in our bodies, in the universe around us, all of it is a gift from Allah. If I give you a hundred dollars out of courtesy, at least you would say to me, thank you. What about the one who gave you everything you enjoy? Your eyes, your ears, your body, your mother, your father, your wealth, your job. You, you were given all this for free. Is he not worthy of our recognition? Imagine the, the kind of peace that we can feel in our hearts if we are thankful to Allah. If someone is good to you and you deny that and you are not thankful, you won't feel peace in your heart. That just if they have some favor over you, a small favor, what about the one that you owe to him everything you have? So this is why we say, La ilaha illallah will free us, it will change your lives. Allah will change. Okay? Now we asked some people, <coughs> actually university students, about what do they know about the meaning of La ilaha illallah? What do they think about it? To see how the Muslim youth understand it. Okay? We watch these interviews together, then we'll come back to comment on them, so watch them with us. Basically I see the word la ilaha illallah as a, um, it's like, it's like, uh, it's like basically why, why everything around us is the way it is, yani, basically that the God created everything and it's really evident in every day of our life. Personally, you can't think of the deeper feeling or the meaning of this word until you think this is what God has ordered us to do. To think, think and use our brains because this is what separates us from animals. If we use our brains and we look all around us, we'll see very big things. Buildings, cars, very sophisticated things. But when you look and imagine, there's something greater than that. There's a power behind everything. Well. You can only say there's only one God. You can only say it when you believe that there is, after questioning yourself a lot. And this is what Islam tells us to do. I wake up every day realizing that I am living here and going to this university, being educated only by the will of God. That any day I might die. So I'm basically living by the will of God. And... Um, uh, uh, everything I have around me is uh, uh, God's na'ma to me. God gave us like various gifts. He gave us our eyes to see, our ears to hear. And I think that the least we can do is thank Him by praying for Him and believing in Him. Uh, after all, uh, this all, all of, the, all of like, the praises we're in, they couldn't have happened without God. So, la ilaha illallah is the least thing we can do. Sometimes, for example, I don't study for exams, but this, I have this like 1% hope because I know if I pray and ask God to, to please help me, God, uh, I want to, 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 to have a good grade and stuff. This belief or this faith is, is excellent. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back. We were waiting for your phone calls. Uh, our numbers will appear on the screen, country code 202 248 or 249. Please call us, tell us what you think, and if you have any contributions, please call us, we're waiting for that. So what do you think of these interviews? Did you see anything interesting? The, um, Ali, yes. yeah, the, the, the lost brother who came and talked about while he was having his exams and then paying. Um, a lot of people fall in this mistake, yeah, yeah. I think they knew uh, a lot of... Uh, I, I myself experienced this mistake. You pray when you need to, when you have an exam. You pray when you're going to get to do something. And afterwards, that's it. 
Your, yeah. yani your season, you worship Allah in seasons. Yes. So it's not right, it doesn't fit. What yes. we need to do is you worship Allah while you have exams, while you don't have exams. When, and you worship Allah when you're happy, everything's okay around you. And then you, you will get to find that you're worshiping Allah in the right way. On Manaj Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in your bad times. Yes, actually what I believe he was referring to, you know, he was referring to the fact that even when he doesn't study, he feels that Allah will help him. And he, if he supplicates, yeah. some people know Allah at the time of need, yes, which is a very important point as well, that we worship Allah at all times. Allah is the Lord of all time, He's not yeah. the Lord of just the hard times. Yeah. And uh, so did, did anything capture your attention with these uh, interviews, some of the answers? Do you think, mm-hmm. let's uh, make the question different. Okay, do you think that from this kind of, these samples, that the Muslim youth really understand what La ilaha illallah means? Its importance in their lives? Do you think? <coughs> I, I think uh, this time, uh, people have a very superficial meaning of La ilaha illallah. Some people believe there's no God but God. They don't really understand that there's nothing worthy of worship yes. except Allah. And this really means, um, you know, that you should not uh, obey the creation if it means disobedience to Allah in all of your life. But we, f- we really have a superficial um, idea of this. You know, we need to study Tawheed yes. a lot more deeper. Excellent, excellent. Mm. And we, many times I said and repeated that the Prophet ﷺ spent 13 years in Mecca <laughs> building the Tawheed. Mm. Building La ilaha illallah because it is the basis for any revival, mm. for any kind of advancement. To change society, to build an active society, a wonderful society, successful society, it should stand on La ilaha illallah. Okay? Let me take this phone call first. We have Arij with us from uh, Saudi. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. How are you, sister? Alhamdulillah, I'm fine by the grace of Allah. And what about you, Sheikh? Alhamdulillah, how are you? Alhamdulillah. Uh, we know that Islam sets down five principal duties that are obligatory upon all Muslims. And the first principle is a shahada. Yes. And among the many benefits of embracing Islam are that once you bear witness there is no God except Allah and Muhammad is his prophet, all your past sins are forgiven and are transported into merits with the reward waiting you in the paradise. And many non-Muslims and also Muslims have the inherent desire for guidance. However, in this complicated, fast-moving society, they get distracted and walk astray from their search. But once they get to know the beauty of a shahada, they feel that they are free from all temptations and yes. personal desires because they come to know that their life is dedicated for the Creator if they have intended the earth. And consequently, they excel in every aspect of their life. Excellent. They set their daily activities according to what Allah commanded them, and they become productive, successful, and role models for everybody. MashaAllah, that's a wonderful <laughs> notion, MashaAllah. May Allah reward you, Sister Arij. That's a wonderful notion, really. La ilaha illallah makes you understand your role in this life. It frees you from many of the worries. Many people have a lot of fears about things, super, uh, about uh, supernatural things that are going to happen, or some kind of imaginary fears that waste their lives. Many people busy themselves with worrying about their future, but it's in the hands of Allah. Once you achieve La ilaha illallah, it frees you from that. And then you get to dedicate your, or focus your attention to one direction. This is how you progress rapidly. And I always say this hadith, I'm going to repeat it, this wonderful hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. When he said, or oh, before that, let me say that, you know, scientists indicate that we use only 10% of our mental abilities. 10%. Do you know how we, how we can increase that? Do you know why we only use 10%? Because we're scattered. And this is what the hadith explains. The Prophet ﷺ said, whoever makes this life his main concern, then Allah will increase his worries. Mm. And Allah will increase his poverty. And then Allah doesn't care where he dies or where he ends up. But the one who makes Allah and the last day his main concern, then Allah will take care of all his affairs. Mm. And Allah will give him the sense of richness in his heart. Mm. And this life with all its pleasures will come to him, submissive to him, will yield itself to him. And then... Allah will be his Lord and Allah will give him paradise according to the meaning of the general meaning of the hadith. Mm. That's really great. Mm. That's what La ilaha illallah does. Mm. So let's start from, inshallah, from now on, thinking about La ilaha illallah when we go to bed, when we wake up, 
Let's be always aware of La ilaha illallah. That Allah is our creator, provider and sustainer. And that we should dedicate our lives to Him. We should only worship Him. He's the only one that we should dedicate our lives to. And then we believe in His names and His attributes. I won't delve into that meaning because when we talk about Iman, we have a big chapter with Al-Iman wa Billah, belief in Allah. And it's a wonderful chapter that we will, inshallah, delve into, take our time because it's very important because it can change us, can help us improve, change ourselves and change, help the other people, other people change and improve themselves. Now, the challenge that I will close our session with is we know that we are living in the 10 days of, the first 10 days of the Hijjah. These are wonderful days. And the Prophet ﷺ said, there are no days that righteous deeds are beloved to Allah more than these days, uh, during two, more than these days. So let's fast Let's recite Quran. Let's do more. I know many people, unfortunately, they haven't recited Ramadan, uh, Quran since Ramadan. No, 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 no. We have to wake up. We have to wake up and make our relationship with Allah steady so that Allah will give us more of His bounty and Allah will give us more success. Okay? So these are the last 10 days. They're going to be our challenge. For the coming week, fast during them. Do righteous deeds and our viewers as well. Do your best during these 10 days. Get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many people fear that they are furthering themselves from Allah or distancing themselves from Allah because we know we have times of weakness and times of strength. So at the time of weakness, Allah gives you more opportunities to get closer to Him and to worship Him. So this is going to be our challenge, inshallah, for this week. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us. I really appreciate the effort that you made to be with us. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us understand this beautiful word. And I say to our viewers, uh, send your emails to us, to the email address, inshallah, that will appear on the screen, inspirations at huda.tv. Many of the emails are wonderful. And as I said, uh, that the website, inshallah, uh, soon will be there, so we can interact more. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward you all and make us benefit from these words, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the words of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I leave you in peace and until we meet next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.